Fuck the mainstream. Seriously. Mainstream always tries to conform you to follow it. And I am not mainstream. And the the risks that I take is a rejection for not being mainstream. But from the day that I'd been born I had not been a mainstream. My parents tried to conform me to be mainstream, but I am not mainstream. I do not fit criteria. And as much as you try and fit me into criteria, it is ridiculously stupid because I am who I am. My concepts of science is not mainstream. My spirituality is not mainstream. Though, um, you can say I'm Raelian, but I'm not your mainstream Raelian. <laughs> Many people actually observed me, um, actually on DeviantArt when I was on there. They said, oh, you know, that, that that's not, you know, that's not in the book kind of thing. Seriously, the universe has many books, but the universe cannot fit inside a single book. And then, um, even my art is in mainstream. Uh, my philosophies of life is in mainstream. And then, the way I dress is in mainstream. Um, often, I actually don't really shop in the town locally because what I see in the shops, um, clothes-wise, is boring and bullshit. It's like, why must I wear something that somebody else wears? Seriously? I like to wear what I like to wear? There was probably some people on this planet who probably wears cuff suits like me. But it's very rare. <laughs> I'd love to meet the person who does. Anyway, um, going on to non, non mainstream science. Um, first of all, with the photon universe theory. First of all, um, I do not follow the concept, you know, I feel it is really stupid. Say if you discover a theory or discover something, a certain aspect of the universe, in a sense, and you name it after yourself, um, who gives you the right to do that? Who gives me the right to do that? Uh, it just causes more complications. For example, say if um, Earth just becomes, you know, when Earth becomes part of the galactic community, having different names for the same specific observation does cause a lot of complications. Um, even certain uh, chemicals that people make on this planet, they tend to associate it with a company or a corporation or even a name of the person who actually discovered the molecule or something like that. It's like, who gives them the right to apply their name to science? You know, science should be something that's completely neutral to that uh, in a sense because it is observed in the, in neutral to that you know fair enough the person on, on, on the specific planet had discovered or um, observed some aspect of science you know that's part of history but to name uh, a certain aspect or discovery after a person it just it just makes things so bloody complicated and stupid <clears throat> because there's somebody down the line <clears throat> who's obviously got the same similar fit theory and apparently there is somebody um, on YouTube just Google the theory of everything basically named their theory after themselves not ex not describing and giving the name of a theory that is neutral because I've got something that's very similar that, and I, I didn't even know that person I thought things out um, um, I got a lot of insight and as I mentioned in the video recall of um, a general science from the people who seen it me now but um, 
that is debatable in itself. But um, then again, first of all, if you Google up the word alien, for example. Right, alien by law, this is actually the true definition of the word alien. A, a non-citizen inhabitant of a country. Now the thing is, why do people call extraterrestrials aliens? Why? It's it's just a politically correct term enforced. Um, the term makes people rather feel negative or threatened by the extraterrestrial when the, the truth of the matter of the fact the extraterrestrial is benevolent and a friend and I understand that they created life on this planet and they were involved in the whole um, development of the evolutionary process on this planet which is actually um, not rarely evolution, but eugenetics uh, in a sense. Um, so, yeah, um, that is my aspect. And of course, it's not mainstream. And do I give a fuck? No, I don't. And then, um, what I was going to say is. And then we can go on onto the alien, um, and that is um, there's a link there. This is on Wikipedia. Um, it gives you a link to extraterrestrial life. Don't say my computer is stalling. Or the connection comes down. I don't need that. I'll just open. Oh, there we go. It's loading. Um, it says the well basically calls us uh, well extraterrestrial is the correct word extraterrestrial life but then it says um, extraterrestrial life means beyond not of the the terrestrial or belonging of Earth didn't originate from Earth in this sense it's the finest life that does not originate from Earth. Referring to as alien life, or simply aliens, or space aliens. It was Jeff Rage, and people say, and it goes on and on and on, saying, there is no evidence of extraterrestrial life. Now, that is actually wrong, in a sense. There's actually quite a number of evidence of people who have actually experienced and have been visited by agents and people, star people, Elohim, whatever you want to call them. They actually like us, they're, they're people, they're human beings. If you look in the word what human being actually means, you could say, okay, um, these extraterrestrials are human beings, but they're not earthling. Earthling is an inhabitant of the earth. Someone who's living here, like uh, Britain, live in Britain. Um, South Africans live in South Africa. Americans live in America. You know, you, you get in what I'm saying? They're to earthlings. Um, And then it goes on evolution and morphology, as in addition to chemical extra light evolution. Science, science fiction has often depicted as like humanoid or reptilian forms. Aliens are uh, being depicted in like grey, light green or grey skin with large head. One has four limbs, in humanoid. Uh, other subjects such as felines, insects, blobs, etc., have occurred in fictional. References of aliens. Uh, so basically, that the people who wrote this article are quite narrow-minded in a sense. Um, where they feel um, they say there's no enough evidence. 
But the evidence is there, but the evidence is actually rejected. Uh, people are being too critical in up and oust. Um, naturally, I think probably the reason why they're like that is probably because there are some people that actually have bullshit of stories. So it doesn't help people like myself who actually had genuine um, interactions with um, extraterrestrials, star people. Um, it's, it's there. And then there's a link in the ufology, alleged alien beings. The word alien doesn't really suit, you know, it's, it's a politically correct term in a sense. So there we go. Um, so, um, oh. So then another thing what I'm going to say is the myth of the Big Bang. Most atheists tend to agree with the Big Bang theory mindlessly. And yet what they don't realize that the whole Big Bang theory had been regurgitated um, by the scientists of the Catholic Church who believe in God. So basically they have actually done this theory on purpose would you actually lead people to believe in the point of a god in a sense and most people tend to follow up on this mindlessly without thinking that the universe um, really has no beginning or end and it's actually infinite, but um, in order to work with something that is observable as a universe, we call it a universe brain. Since I have the theory of the universe photon theory, which is the universe and a photon is the brain differences between recognizable points of the infinite. So, um, because you can. You can actually group anything from an organism to an atom to a, but it's most simpler with a photon because a photon is a very simple thing um, actually, and um, it's much simpler to do it that way. That's what I'm going to say. I must.